in some places yesterday with the blowing heavy snow at times. Now today is a bit of a transitional day for the Northeast after what was Quinlan, this powerhouse of a system that impacted much of the country, whether it was with the winter weather or with the severe weather that we saw out of this or the winds that lasted through much of the day yesterday. We are going to get that to move out and then we'll have a brief reprieve before our next system. So some of the top snowfall port reports here across the plains, Taos, New Mexico coming in on top with 15 inches. Quinter, Kansas, more than a foot. Same thing in Wallace, Kansas and Sharon uh, Springs, Telluride, Colorado, around the same there. Let's head a little bit farther east up through the Ohio River Valley into the northeast. Arnoldsburg, West Virginia, 10 inches. You're kind of the winner out of this region. Nashville even coming in with five inches. Jackson, Ohio, eight inches for you. Now here is the, um, the real punch of cold that's been behind this system. Right now, this is what it feels like across the region feels like 16 in DC feels like the goose egg feels like zero in Pittsburgh Boston are you shivering do you have to go out early this Sunday morning you might want to double bundle up because those winds are still cranking it's giving us a wind chill and look how much colder it is this morning compared to where you were yesterday morning at this time yeah you got that front to move through those winds to switch around and now it's 23 degrees colder in New York than it was yesterday morning at this time 15 degrees colder in Burlington and that's resulting in temperatures well below average in the teens and 20s and then of course I already showed you the wind chill so the wind chills making it feel even worse this is what you can expect in terms of temperatures today today will still be a bit below average but here's the good news while the temperatures are staying a little bit colder than they should be today it's going to start to improve over the next couple days quick look at your wind chill forecast because this is what's really going to impact you if for some reason you were uh, wanting to do brunch today I'd say it's an inside brunch in the northeast because it is freezing cold by your afternoon we're still looking at those wind chills that are going to make you say, you know what? I think I'll just stay in today, Dr. Postel. Uh, I think it's good. getting better, Dr. Yes. Postel. Thank you. Well, not the weather you want when you think of spring in the Sunshine State. Florida is feeling really chilly today with temperatures up to 15 degrees below average in some places. Paul Goodlow's live in Pontestal. Thanks so much. Well, coming up on Weekend Recharge, can we just bring a fire threat for the Southern Plains this afternoon? We'll look into that in just a moment. But first, meteorologist Mike Bettis explains the mechanics of a wildfire and the weather ingredients that can turn them into monsters. And you know, we've gotten some relief here or there. We get the spurts of rain occasionally, but it just has not been enough to one, alleviate the drought or prolonged enough to really make any significant difference in these issues that we're having. Red flag warnings across the panhandle plains of Texas up through OKC, Wichita included in that. And uh, Oklahoma City today, you're going to have gusts up to 40 miles an hour. It's going to be windy and dry and warm, and that is perfect fire weather. So let's talk a little bit about it. When we talk about elevated fire conditions, you can see that brush and grass fires they steadily spread but small fires are easily contained when you get up to those critical fire weather levels the fires start easily and they spread pretty easily as well and they can be really difficult to control as you get into extreme fire weather the fires start quickly they spread really quickly and then they are sometimes unmanageable and that's what we've seen at times in the past with some of these fires that have gotten really big and out of control uh, here for today where we have that critical fire danger that I was just talking about where the fires can spread easily. Amarillo included in that down through Abilene. When you've got such low relative humidity, such dry air in place as we have. And I'll tell you, this is probably going to get worse as we head throughout the day as well. The winds are also pretty gusty, sustained in Lubbock at 14 miles an hour and Amarillo at 12 miles an hour, but gusting even higher than that. That all comes together to not only start those fires, but spread those quickly. Tomorrow, again, uh, around the borderlands, we've got that critical critical fire danger elevated as you look up towards. Yeah, it is. Now, of, of course, that's kind of what you expect. It stays cold there for a little while longer. Uh, but nonetheless, you'd probably like a little bit of a break, right? That's not what we're getting. Currently in Green Bay, we're sitting at 1826 in Minneapolis. Some flakes flying from Traverse City down through Grand Rapids. Marquette, you're also reporting some of those snowflakes currently. Here's what we can expect as we move through your Sunday. This initial disturbance kind of lifts out of that Great Lakes region. But watch what happens. We start to see the snow overspreading the plains 
rains coming through Minnesota, crossing over the upper Mississippi River Valley as we head into your early Monday morning and then throughout the day Monday. I kind of like this little storm. It looks like a little slug crawling across the northern tier. Uh, every time I every time I see it, that's what I think. Uh, also, I'm on like less than a, an hour less of sleep, so you guys just bear with me this morning. Here's what we're expecting. Generally about one to three inches, maybe especially north of Minneapolis, north of Green Bay, southern portions of the UP, kind of right along that 94 corridor. If you're going to Minneapolis to Bismarck, that's where some of that snow is going to line up to the northeast now where yes, it is cold. It is bitter cold this morning. You've got a little bit of a uh, lake effect snow band that's been moving through the Syracuse region. Uh, a winter weather advisory associated with that. Once that clears out, that winter weather advisory will be gone. Today is going to be a cold one, a few sprinkles of snow. Uh, but Dr. Postel, the good news is here that we are going to start to warm up. That's the good news. But of course, as we know, with changes in the weather comes that possibility for severe weather quite often. And that will come back in the Southern Plains, Felicia. Thank you very much. I think Texas is one of the first places that will see more severe. Talk about it. I know you're like, no, we just did this. What do you mean? We've got to talk about the next winter storm. Yeah, well, sorry, guys. Uh, uh, that's what we're here for, to keep you updated, whether you like what we're telling you or not. So here's our first system that's bringing us some um, messy weather. Not so much messy weather, but some precipitation there across the Pacific Northwest, the Rockies, down through even portions of Nevada. Now, here's our next system. Your eye probably goes right to that, right to that swirly there out the Pacific. That's going to be an even more potent system than the current one that we're seeing. So closer look, look at what we've got going on across the northern Rockies. You can see here Missoula, cloudy skies there. Spokane, 39 and some rain coming down. It's a wet morning in Portland and Eugene. Medford, 43 for you. Probably a little misty, I would say. In Seattle, you've got rain in the forecast and the temperature is really not fluctuating very much. We're talking 40s and 50s overnight and during the day. By Wednesday, you get a little bit of a break in that rain, but the cloud cover is still sticking around. Now I mentioned we have our first system that we're keeping an eye on and then the next system that's going to be moving on shore and this is going to be that kind of atmospheric river effect that we see sometimes with a straight pumping of moisture as we head through the early part of the week. Of course across the higher elevations you get that snow to come down as well. The Wasatch is going to get a little snow out of this and all of this is going to continue filling in eastward across the front range Denver. You've got that flakage flying as we head into Thursday. A quick look at some of the snow still to come. Some the higher elevations up to a foot, but generally this isn't going to be a huge snowmaker. Dr. Postel, uh, we, you're just not done with winter yet. We Over a minute, but first let's take a look at your seven day stretch, get you prepared for this week ahead. Here's what your Sunday is looking like. Lots of bright sunshine, but still cold temperatures with the exception of a couple different systems moving through the Pacific Northwest and the northern tier for your Sunday. By Monday, we start to see these temperatures rebounding back closer to average in NYC. Dallas up Upper 70s for you. Meanwhile, we start to see our next impactful system moving into the West Coast. By Tuesday of next week, you'll notice we've got precipitation stretching from the Pacific Northwest across the Northern Rockies. Bright sunshine in Denver, feeling great for you. A little cooler in Dallas while we also have some rain moving across the Southeast for your Tuesday. By Wednesday, again, the Southeast is where we'll see the rain. Sunshine in NYC and Dallas, upper 70s. It's going to be a nice midweek for you. To your St. Patrick's Day, where the rain is is encompassing the mid-Atlantic, but also some precipitation moving across the central U.S. That rain shield expands by Friday of next week and into Saturday. It's rainy for the east, but nice and dry across the middle parts of the country.